Right now, the NHL season is a little over the halfway mark, and trade rumors are continuously heating up by the day. Already, some big pieces have been dealt, as Tarasenko would get traded to the Rangers, and Bo Horvat would get traded to the Islanders. The Islanders are in an interesting spot, and gave up some notable pieces to Vancouver, one of which was Adu Radu, a prospect with high upside that Isles fans had high hopes for. All eyes are on Ratu just as much as they are on Horvat to see how this trade will impact his career. Almost all the time, we hear of NHL trades that revived or saved a player's career. Trades that turned late bloomers into stars. But almost no one talks about NHL trades that ruin careers. Ones that didn't work out for one of the players involved that either led to a massive decline in performance or even out of the league. The Montreal Canadiens had perhaps one of the greatest drafts in recent memory back in 2007, as with their first three picks, they drafted three stars. First, they take Ryan McDonough 12th overall. Then, 10 picks later, they'd select their future captain, Max Pacioretty. And finally, with the 43rd pick, Montreal would select an electrifying defenseman. Good pass, shoots! P.K. Subban was an absolute steal in the second round, and knowing what we know now, it's crazy why his draft stock wasn't as high. At the time, some scouts questioned his offensive upside, with some even stating that it was non-existent. But when P.K. entered the league, he quickly put those rumors to rest. Subban established himself as a defensive playmaker with a powerful shot and the insane ability to fly by his opposition. His aggressiveness big hits, and generosity made him an instant fan favorite, as not only did he develop into a star defenseman, but Subban's charitable work in both Montreal and Nashville showcased just how kind of a person he was off the ice. PK would tally multiple 50-60 to 60 point seasons as a half, taking home the Norris Trophy in 2012, and being named an NHL All-Star for four straight seasons. His massive trade to the Predators during the 2016 offseason sent shockwaves throughout the league. But this isn't the trade we'll be talking about, as while a member of the Preds, his dominance only continued. But it's the trade to the Devils during the 2019 draft that ultimately changed his career. At the time, this trade seemed like a massive steal, as acquiring a Norris caliber defenseman for basically pennies on the dollar was absolutely insane. The hope was for PK to be an anchor on the blue line and a piece to make New Jersey competitive again. But none of that ended up being the case, as once arriving to Jersey, Subban began a slow and tragic decline. During his last season as a Predator, his defensive analytics were already on the decline, with his goals above replacement being on par with the likes of Xavier Owlett and Christian Juice. But once arriving to New Jersey, his analytics would only get worse. In his first season, out of 200 198 defensemen, he would rank dead last in goals above replacement, 94th in goals for per 60 minutes, and would go from being in the company of some of the NHL's best defensemen to being in the same analytic field as Jack Johnson. The next two seasons would be much of the same, as his defensive game got so bad that he became more known for his slew footing than his on-ice play. When his $9 million contract was set to expire, Subban shockingly hung up the skates and announced his retirement at 33 years old. And for those who watched Prime PK Subban, this news and his decline as a whole was extremely disheartening. Now, I'm going to shift my focus back to Montreal's 12th overall pick, Ryan McDonough as the Habs would eventually go on to trade him to the Rangers for a package of players, one of which was forward Scott Gomez. Gomez is also well known in the Habs fan base, but for all the wrong reasons. Gomez was once an extremely underrated contributor on both the Devils and the Rangers. His presence in Jersey helped guide the Devils to a Stanley Cup in both 2000 and 2003. And when he signed his massive seven-year deal in New York, the hope was for him to continue his 70-80 point dominance. And at first, he did just that. In his first year as a Ranger, he'd record 70 points. But the following year, he'd only record 58. After only two seasons on Broadway, and after a slight decrease in totals, the Rangers would infamously trade him to Montreal. The Canadians were in dire need of offensive production, 
and considered Gomez to be the main piece coming back to them. And despite the media's overwhelming concern, it seemed like the perfect match. He'd be reunited with former teammate Brian Giotta, and he'd get to play a major role on Montreal's offense. But what happened instead quickly spiraled into a complete disaster. Montreal media was right. They showed much displeasure towards the move based on Gomez's drop in production. His first year as a Hab was all right, as he'd go on to post another 50-point season. However, the following year, his totals would reach career lows. He'd only score seven goals and would notch 38 points in total, and he would also record another embarrassing stat line as well. On February 5th, 2011, Gomez would score a goal, but afterwards, he wouldn't score again until a year later against the Islanders on February 9th of 2012. His goalless drought would last approximately 369 days, and fans cope with the pain in one of the most hilarious ways possible. Apparently, numerous websites were created with the sole purpose to count how many days it's been since he scored a goal, with the most famous one being DidScottGomezScore.com. Eventually, Montreal would buy out his contract after he continued the struggle and received less ice time. And after the buyout, Gomez would bounce around the league, becoming nothing more than a veteran journeyman. Remember this? And it's going to be rattled out and down the ice. This is bouncing into the net! Buck, follow the tennis ball. One, two, three, four, five bounces. And then right over the glove, and it completely takes a right turn. Man! This goal was plastered everywhere. Vesa Toscala would go on to become one of the most memed goaltenders of the 2010s. But why? After a few seasons of having the fight for a spot on the roster, the 05-06 season proved to be a career year for Toscala. He'd record a 23-7-4 record and would earn the nickname The Finnish Horse by San Jose's main broadcaster. Due to Toscala's emergence the following season, both he and the Bakov were considered by Shark management to be number one goaltenders. The Sharks attempted to trade one of them, but couldn't find a suitor. Toscala that season would continue to remain solid, recording four shutouts and once again posting decent numbers. Come the 2007 draft, San Jose managed to trade one of the goaltenders, and that goalie was Toscala. He gets shipped off to the Maple Leafs, and after beating out Andrew Raycroft and being named Goalie of the Month, he would take over as the Leafs starter. The first year of the Toronto Toscala experience was average at best. He'd post a winning record, but his overall statistics would slowly start to decline, which leads us to the 08-09 season, where he would infamously fumble the bag versus the Islanders, and then would give up another horrendous goal against the Buffalo Sabres. And soon after, Toscala became solely known for his on-ice mistakes, all while his numbers and eventually overall record would continue to plummet. He would go from winning 33 games in the 07-08 season to winning just 7 two years later, posting an abysmal 8-7-4 save percentage and an almost 4 goals against average. He would, of course, get traded to the Flames, and after starting just 3 games, he'd be out of the NHL for good. If you thought this decline was bad, the final player in today's video went from winning the Vesna Trophy to eventually being out of the league. The mysterious downfall of Jim Carrey deserves a deep dive, as he went from dominating the NHL to leaving the league within a span of five years. Carey began his professional career in the Capitals' AHL team. There, he'd post solid numbers and take home a handful of impressive accolades. I say this because many assumed that Jim Carrey's breakout came out of nowhere, but he was already taking home Rookie of the Year awards and being named the league's top goaltender before even stepping foot on NHL ice. His first year as a capital was great. He'd go 18-6-3, and his success that season would help him earn the starting role, which takes us to his breakout year the 95-96 season. Carey, as Washington's starter, would win 35 games, 
post a 226 goals against average, had an insane 9 shutouts, and would win the Vesna Trophy for his efforts. Shockingly, after his insane sophomore season, the Capitals would trade Carey to Boston, and unfortunately, he would never be the same upon arrival. He would go from being a regular starter to barely being able to stay in the NHL, getting called up and down from the NHL to the AHL before eventually getting released by the team. And after yet another failed stint in St. Louis, he would be out of the league after the 98-99 season. With no explanation, Jim Carey went from being at the top of the NHL to being completely out of it in five years. His former teammate, Olaf Kolzig, discussed his opinions of Jim in a Hockey News article. And he explained that, quote, I don't think becoming an NHL player was something he looked at doing long term. Once he was out of hockey, he was out of hockey. Keith Jones also cited a playoff defeat that could have also affected his overall confidence, stating, we lost against Pittsburgh and Lemieux lit him up. I don't know if he was ever the same after that. By hearing the quotes by his former teammates, it's safe to assume that Carey just didn't see a future in hockey long term, and didn't live and breathe the game like most NHLers do. It's a shame that Jim Carey didn't decide to stick around, because as Kolzig stated, if he really wanted it and truly loved the game, he probably could have had one hell of a career.